Now, I have a, th a theory here that I'd like to present. Scale matters, and if you think about scale, a dimensionless uh, m matter, if you can assume that variations of a characteristic, and it doesn't matter what that characteristic is, if you assume that those, those, that characteristic is distributed on a normal curve, then the larger the population, the greater the number of, of individuals with a given level of deviation from that norm. So I will, if you look here, you can see that at, at this level of deviation, um, it, it's proportional, but the, the absolute number is increasing. A larger the population, the greater the likelihood of a non-zero uh, person happening out here at the extremes. And you can either think of this as over time, where once every 400 years we get a Newton or an Einstein, or you can think over in a static period, the larger the population in a, in a given time period, the more likely it is that you're gonna have somebody who is at the extremes. In many, in many areas, there are character are desirable and undesirable. And if you look at this, again, this is a valueless uh, uh, curve. Uh, if we look at what happens at the, at the ends, as we get further, we have, because people are a stepwise function, you know, it's hard to have a fraction of a person, uh, it's likely that as the population increases that you're going to have somebody out here at a very high uh, level of deviation from the norm or a, a, a high sigma, if you will. And what's interesting is that if you have a given bandwidth for something, that if you're only paying attention to a given bandwidth for something, the larger the population, the more extreme that bandwidth that you're paying attention to is allowed. I'll just read this. News, what's expected to attack to capture our attention? I think that you'll agree that we don't generally pay attention to events that don't really deviate from the norm. They're normal. We don't really pay attention to them. I mean, uh, you know, the sun rose today. How many of you noticed? <laughs> okay, we're engineers here. <laughs> but I think that it would have been much more noticeable had the sun not risen, don't you think? Uh, but basically, uh, Low sigma events, you know, events that, that happen uh, that are close to the, to the norm really don't gather our attention. Another fact is that, that fear captures our attention more than joy. Um, it, it's not that it's better than it, it's just, you know, we're more aware of uh, what is potentially going to have a negative impact on us. And as a result of that, the th that it takes for good news is higher than the threshold for bad news. If we have a given amount of uh, bandwidth for news, and we have a half hour news show, for instance, uh, something's gotta be really special because the news is driven by capturing our attention because capturing our attention is what drives advertising. So here's another way of looking at it. For equivalent news, so in, in, if for equivalent news, the delta there, the, or the level of, of deviation of bad news, if we consider bad on the left, and, or undesirable on the left and desirable on the right, it's got to be stronger. Uh, and if it's stronger, that means it's going to occur less often. So the, the time a lot is static. And as the population increases, the net result is that the reporting of news, good news gets squeezed out by bad. What gets reported shifts to events with a higher severity or a higher sigma. And events in a given time period with a larger population are likely to uh, have more severe events than going beyond previous extremes. And also, another way of looking at this is extreme events happen more often. And again, this is not a value judgment here on when I'm talking about extreme events. 
Um, uh, we can talk, for instance, on relative balance between the Kennedy assassination and the, and the uh, moon landing. I mean, we have extreme events, very, what I would refer to as a very high sigma event, both captured uh, world attention, both very different. So if we look at another aspect of news, before uh, the printing press, we were very much in a local environment. Communication was, was slow. It wasn't particularly reliable. Um, but more importantly, things that happened in the outside world that affected us generally were, seemed arbitrary to us. We had no understanding or comprehension of what or why, and they would often appear without notice. Uh, moving forward a few weeks, when we get to the radio age, lots of radio stations, um, and I'm talking about the golden era of the radio age, when people would gather around the radio to listen to programs, uh, there's a shared experience for those programs, and the actions of the outside world have become more comprehensible, and the outside world has basically no longer appears without notice, except for things like weather, where a hurricane or a tornado would come without warning. We get to the golden era of TV, um, basically from the year I was born to uh, the late 70s, uh, to, to the year I graduated from college. We have few channels. Uh, and here in the U.S., we get ABC, NBC, and CBS. We're, we're for high sigma events, for high, highly unusual events, all of the networks broadcast the same message. And not only that, there wasn't any alternative to not listening to it. We had a shared experience. And that shared experience kind of drew us more to the center as a, a unifying cultural force. If we move forward to, to look at cable, cable is kind of the end of unity. At the same time that cable is coming on, we're getting lots of other television stations as well. Uh, we have lots of choices, and when this big message or this big event comes on, we can turn on the cartoon channel, or we can turn on something else, the, the, the sports channel. Not every station is covering everything all the, all the time. We also have the rise of special interest content, and we are still in a broadcast media. That's a one-to-many uh, area, but, but we're getting interest groups getting their attention focused on. When we come to the web, web is the, you know, it's the great connector, and we're getting broadcast many-to-many. -many. And what's happened is we have a self-sorting mechanism where like-minded individuals can get together and they kind of self-assemble. But what we've lost is there's no shared experience, no uh, cultural force drawing us back to the mean. And we, we've also lost, uh, I mean, that great cultural unifying force of television in the golden era also solidified the, 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 uh, the melting pot aspects of, of the United States in particular. But today we don't. Uh, that central force, so the melting pot seems to be uh, no longer melting, and we have lots of little nuggets going on. At the same time, we have lots of positive effects, including the rise of cross-fertilization uh, and something that I refer to as serendipity by Google. So in the, in the golden age of, of TV, news was designed to attract customers to drive advertising revenue to other shows to, for our loyalty. I mean, no, when I was growing up, I was an, an, an NBC uh, viewer as opposed to a CBS, and nobody ever watched ABC. Um, others felt differently, other households. And we had the news broadcasters who were family uh, figures. Uh, you know, they were, they were the grandfather figures, uh, Walter Cronkite, Huntley and Brinkley, etc. But what ran on those news programs was based on the value of it rather than on the attentive, attractiveness on it. But when, by the time we've gotten to the cable age, news has become a platform by and of itself for selling advertising. And as a result, run what grabs our attention, and what grabs our attention is generally driven by things that are negative. 
and therefore you get the if it bleeds, if it leads syndrome. At a low population, the number of individuals uh, decline, inclined to disruptive th behaviors may be small. If you look here at point A. But you can see that as the nation increases, that number increases proportionally. That's, that's to be expected. But what's interesting is, as the population grows, at some point in time, get the appearance of individuals with the capacity to incite others to action. Um, I, I use Bin Laden here, Mother Teresa, for those sci-fi fans. I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the trilogy. Foundation trilogy, thank you. There are a couple of characters in there uh, uh, who are at both extremes of this. And, but what happens is, and, and this is representative, but basically there's a dip here um, below A, and it drives these people from point A to point B, and it drives people to action. Now, the people who are, who are here at point B, I call those people attractors, and attractors distort the bell curve. They're enabled by the web. They reinforce people to um, high, highly deviant activity, and I'm using the term deviant not in a negative sense, but deviating from the mean. And it also results in more extreme news. So that's my theory of news. Uh, so what? Well, it does explain a few things. Um, if you talk to uh, our colleagues here from the UK, often they will say that, that news from the US always seems worse than the news from the EU. Why is that? Uh, well, EU has 400 million people, the US has 300 million people, you would think it would be the other way around. But in reality, um, EU is not a 400 million, dollar, 400 million person market, it's a series of 10 to 40 million person markets that have um, a link in for major events to a 400 million market. Uh, person market, but mostly it's a, they're much smaller markets, and the only things that they hear from the U.S. in a much further sense are things that are even more extreme. If you look at China, China's got a lot more people than we do. Why isn't the news there worse? Well, for one reason, they have a controlled media. Um, and they have a somewhat controlled web, so the ability to pe for people uh, to meet with one another uh, has a higher level of viscosity. And also they have a cultural and governmental very severe response to uh, very high uh, sigma activity. So the theory of news, we, we know the way of this thing, but we have unintended consequences. And one of the un unintended consequences is the web as an enabler for attractors, which changes the name of the, uh, of the game.